Mr. Speaker, we are shocked, horrified, and deeply saddened by the news coming from Paris. As a member of the Intelligence Committee, I know there is much to fear, both for our allies and for us. But in light of the attacks on our ally France last Friday, I urge my colleagues to keep a cool head and not to react exactly the way that ISIS and other terrorists hope, terrorists hope we do, with fear, with chaos, and with lashing out. But sadly, that is what we have already seen Republican governors, elected leaders, candidates, and media figures do. I've been here long enough to know a thing or two about opportunism. Maybe it is too much to resist when you are one of 15 candidates for President of the United States. Politicians, pundits, and celebrities will be tempted to say whatever they can to get the news cameras pointed at them. The governor of Illinois, my home state, could not resist saying our state was close to Syrians fleeing the terror of ISIS and the Assad regime. The governor of Louisiana, the son of immigrants, running for president of the United States, a nation of immigrants, said no to refugees. The governors of a dozen other states did so too. A senator whose parents came as refugees from Cuba fleeing there has said no too. This is despicable and cowardly and precisely the kind of reaction ISIS wanted. ISIS could not have written a better script. The free people of the world are turning their backs on people seeking safety and freedom. When we sent Jews back to Germany and when we sent Japanese to internment camps, we regretted it and we will regret this as well. We have had candidates actually say that refugees seeking safety in the strongest nation in the world must first pass a test to prove they are from unacceptable religion in the United States of America. They said this, in the 21st century, an acceptable religion in America. Now, of course, the governors of Illinois, Texas, and Louisiana, and most of the other states that are scared of ISIS are Republican. And because it is a federal matter, they are overstepping their powers with executive orders because they cannot actually stop refugees from resettling in their states. And they know it. How sad. Instead, they have instructed state agencies not to assist people fleeing terror. We are a better country than that. No matter how scared Republican leaders become, we must not abandon our commitment to being a nation without equal in the world, a nation that does not fear or shy away from any challenge. It is our commitment to religious equality and to freedom to worship as we please that has made us a great nation, and this is no time to abandon that tradition. Our bravery, the bravery of our military, the bravery of our commitment to freedom and equality has shown for almost 250 years what American exceptionalism is truly all about. It is not the time to lose sight of ourselves and say America is too weak. America cannot handle 20,000 or 200,000 refugees fleeing for their lives. It is not the time for America to consider raising the white flag and say to those waving the black flag, yes, ISIS, you are right. We dislike and fear Muslims, and we don't care if you perish or not. A lot of us love this country too much to see it abandon core principles and values because religious extremists commit acts of terror designed precisely to terrorize us. On Thursday, the Immigration Subcommittee will hold a hearing on refugees from Syria and the Middle East, as well it should. Look, you can already imagine what we will hear. Republicans will most likely raise fears that Muslim terrorists disguised as refugees would somehow pass exhaustive criminal background checks because they've been lying in wait in those camps overseas for years on the slim chance they could do damage to America. They will raise suspicions, instill fear of Muslims, maybe even fear of a president they've been saying is a Muslim, and it will probably be pretty sad display. Let us, as legislators and leaders and patriots, rise above petty politics, rise above sectarian fears, rise above the underlying layer of xenophobia that often surfaces in this country at moments like this throughout our history. And let us maintain America's commitment to being a beacon of hope for those fleeing oppression and violence and intolerance, a haven for the re religiously persecuted, whether they are Buddhists from Tibet or Christians from Iran or pilgrims from Europe. That is who we are. We are a nation that lives by the motto, out of many, one. 
we will not run in fear from that model today or any day. This is America.